Hello, welcome to Bits and Biology. My name's Liz, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to play the one to five player game, Birdwatcher. Birdwatcher was published in 2022, was designed by Zakir Jaffrey and uh, with art by Lauren Helton, and published by uh, Oni Game Studios and Renegade Game Studios. It plays in about 25 to 60 minutes. Let's go down to the table and see how to play. Birdwatcher, players are wildlife photographers who are taking photos of elusive birds of paradise, these beautiful birds here, and they will first have to lure them to their tree and then take photo of them, publish them in their photo journal, uh, publish their findings in publications, and at the end of the game the player with the most citation points uh, will be the winner. So let's take a look at the different components we have here, and then I will go through the different actions that you can take on your turn. Uh, so here we have two player boards, so we're about to be set up for a two-player game. Up above is what we refer to as the tree, and down below is where you will put your photo journal. On the player boards, they have some reminders of different activities you can do on your turn, and also some reminders about end-of-game scoring that you want to keep in mind as you play. We also have uh, the Clearing and the Jungle and Academy board. This is called the Bird Deck. In a one to four player game, you will use just this uh, 69 card, standard 69 card deck, plus some special cards that I'll talk about in a minute. In a five player game, you would also uh, use these 12 wired Bird of Paradise cards. You can use these in a two to four player game. You would just swap out for a blue bird of paradise um, that you see here. So you would remove all of these cards and you could uh, put in the 12 wired bird of paradise if you wanted to play with that in a two to four player game. But otherwise in a, two, in a five player game, you would use all of these cards. We also have uh, some special cards. We have some rare hybrids. These are birds of paradise that are the result of matings between two different species of birds of paradise. And I'll just point out that four of these are actual documented hybrids that, will, that we think are hybrids, uh, relatively documented. Two of them are imaginary. Um, one I don't know the story behind, and one of them was created by Kickstarter backers. Also with these special cards, we have four imposter nestlings. These are brood parasites, and I will talk more about these when I talk about uh, the different actions that you can take. And then lastly, we have the publications deck. Uh, so different cards here that will give you different bonuses depending on if you meet a particular criteria. And so let's see how we get set up for a two-player game of Bird Watcher. The first thing you're going to do is deal four cards to each player and they're going to put those cards face up in their tree, so the area above their player board. And then you also want to deal three cards to the jungle. And we leave the clearing uh, empty for now, that will be populated shortly. In a solo game you would deal four cards out to the clearing, but we're not going to do that right now. We're setting up for a two-player game. And then next you would deal three cards to the Academy from the publication deck. And then finally, you're gonna take those special cards that I showed you. Do notice that they have a different back to them, so you will know when these are coming up, but you're gonna shuffle these into uh, this standard bird deck here. Uh, I'm not gonna do that at the moment, I'm just gonna stick them under there for now. Uh, so now we are set up for a two-player game of Bird Watcher. Players are going to spend their turns calling birds to their tree from the clearing and from the jungle. They're going to be snapping photos of the birds that they have in their tree and then putting them into their photo journal as well as publishing their results in publications. They can also use a zoom lens to take a picture of a bird that is in an opponent's tree. And so I'll talk about each of those. Uh, they call them activities. Uh, it'll become clear why here in just a minute. The photos and publications are always assembled from left to right in your photo journal, and that's where they will score points at the end of the game, but the order is extremely important, so uh, just from left to right is how everything is added. Uh, the tree here is the face-up row of cards that are 
waiting to be photographed, you can have a maximum of six birds in your tree. Uh, birds will sometimes leave your tree. It turns out that if you're using one of these old-fashioned cameras, they're quite noisy. And so when you do take a photograph of a bird to put it in your photo journal, you scare one into the clearing or startle one into the clearing. Uh, so the photo journal is this space below your tree. Uh, like I said, birds and publications are always added to the right, so from left to right. Once a card is added to your photo journal, it can't be moved. And again, that order is going to be important for end of game scoring. The jungle here is the three face up bird cards. And anytime cards are removed from this, they are replaced at the end of that activity. Birds uh, may be called from the jungle or from the clearing, and they can also be flushed from the jungle into the clearing. The clearing is going to be uh, four piles of face-up bird cards. So I'm just going to put these here so you can see what that looks like. Um, and there might be multiples in some of these piles. Uh, in fact, there probably will be in short order be multiples of these. And so these are the four um, face-up piles that will be in the clearing. Players can look through these piles at any time. So you can always look to see uh, what is in each of these piles. Birds can be called from the clearing into the player's tree, just like they can be called from the jungle into the player's tree. And then birds return to the clearing when they get startled by that take a photo action because of your very noisy camera. If you are taking an action where you can add birds to the clearing from the jungle, you first have to fill empty spaces and then you can put cards on whatever stack you want. If a bird is startled from your tree to the clearing, again, empty spaces have to be filled first. Uh, so let's put some more cards in the jungle here so we can talk about those in a minute. Uh, these publications can be taken from any of those locations. Uh, once they are taken, cards taken from the academy and put into a player's photo journal are then replaced immediately as soon as they're taken. And just like adding birds to your photo journal, publications will be added in the same order. So every single card that goes into your photo journal is always added from left to right. So let's take a look at the anatomy of these bird cards. So most of them will have a scoring ribbon over here on the left, and I'll talk about the birds that don't here in a moment, but most of them have this scoring ribbon. So here you can see that if you have um, one bird, it's not worth any points. If you have two birds, they would have to be right next to each other. Let's find another one of those. So they would have to be next to each other in your photo journal, and then they would score eight points. If you had three, one right after the other, that would be worth 12 points. And if you had four right after the other, that would be 24 points. If you have five, it doesn't gain you additional points, so it caps out at uh, four birds in a row. If they are separated, by any other card, like this publication card, now they are no longer considered a set, and both of these birds would be worth zero points in this case, because that's uh, what one bird is worth for the red bird of paradise. Uh, some of them, like I said, don't have a scoring ribbon. They instead have a scoring stamp, and so that is true of the black sicklebills, as well as um, these hybrid birds of paradise. Uh, that I showed you earlier. And then, let's see, some of them, there's two others that I want to show you. So the imposter nestlings have a question mark, and that is because when you use an imposter nestling, it copies the bird that is immediately to the left of it. So in this case, this imposter nestling, because they're brood parasites, remember, uh, would count as a king of Saxony if it came right after it in your photo journal, and so these two cards together would be worth 10 points. Uh, so that's how the imposter nestlings work. Um, the other one that works a little differently is the 12 wired bird of paradise. Notice it has an X up here in the scoring stamp. And what that means is you will count for each 12 wired bird of paradise that you have in your photo journal, it will count uh, one point per bird that you have. Each one of these would count. So each of these would be worth three points, so this would be a total of nine points right here. Uh, and that's how you score the 12 wired 
Bird of Paradise cards. Keep in mind that when scoring these 12 wired Bird of Paradise cards, they do not need to be adjacent. They can be anywhere in your photo journal, but they don't need to be adjacent to score all of them. So in this case, if we had uh, one here, and then maybe a black billed, uh, sick, uh, a black sickle bill, and then a king of Saxony, you should probably have two of those. Um, and then we had another 12 wired Bird of Paradise, and then maybe this standard wing, and then another 12 wired Bird of Paradise. That's three of them at the end of the game. Those would score three points each. If there was only two of them, they would score two points each, and that would be a total of four. So that's how you score those. Uh, some of these birds, as you can see here on this black sickle bill, have a little insect icon. Um, and so when you take a photo of one of these birds and you put it in your photo journal, you would take the matching insect token and uh, put it on your player board. These can be used to gain you extra actions, so you can spend two of these uh, during your turn, only one time during your turn can you do this, uh, but you can spend two of these to gain an extra action. Any that you have at the end of the game would score according to how many of them are unique. So in this case, that would be three unique insect tokens and that would score six points. Uh, notice that we don't score for sets of unique tokens, it's just number of unique tokens. So in this example here, there would be four unique tokens. These two are duplicates, so they wouldn't score at all. So you probably should have used those to gain an extra action. So that's how insect tokens work. On each of these bird cards, it'll tell you the rarity, how many uh, that you will find in the deck. So for example, this blue bird of paradise, there are 12 of these cards in the deck. Uh, so they'll tell you how many are, and that's important because you score according to how many are adjacent. So you have to kind of know what you might be able to expect to get out of that deck. I already pointed out that the rare hybrids and the imposter nestlings have a different back to them, so you will know when those are coming up next in the bird deck. On the publication cards, these have a few different things going on here. So in the middle here, this is the rule for scoring this publication card, and every one of these is different. So for instance, this one says two citation points, this is the same as victory points, uh, two citation points per different bird species in the preceding four pages of your photo journal. So remember when I said the order is important, well, this is one of the reasons. And so it has some symbols over here on the left to remind you of that because, of course, that's going to be covered up. The rules text is going to be covered up um, when you start adding birds to your photo journal. So that'll remind you of the scoring. We can also see that this is worth two books. At the end of the game, the person with the most books will earn seven points, and the person with the fewest books will score minus two points. Having zero books is always worth minus two points. Uh, so we'll talk more about endgame scoring uh, after I go through the different actions. But that's what you'll find on these publication cards. Some of these publication cards you can see here in the bottom left corner are worth points all on their own. So this one's worth two citation points. So those are the publication cards. So that goes through all the components. Let's take a look at the actions uh, that you can do on your turn. Starting with the person with the first player marker, players will continue to take turns until the end of the game is triggered. And I'll go over how that happens uh, after I go through the different actions that you can take. So players have three actions on their turn, and they can choose from five possible activities that cost either one or two actions each. And remember that you can always spend two insect tokens from your player board uh, to gain an extra action. So first I'm going to name the actions, and then I will go through what they do in detail. So uh, the first one is you can take a photo of a bird in your tree. That'll cost you one action. You can perform a bird call. That'll also cost you one action. You can run into the jungle. That will cost you one action. And then there's two additional activities uh, that cost two actions each, and that is zoom lens and publish. So let's go through each of these uh, five possible activities. The first one is you can take a photo of a bird in your tree. So first thing you're going to do is, because your camera, your old-fashioned camera, is so noisy, you're going to choose one of your birds that will be startled by your camera 
and uh, startle it into the clearing. It flies away into the clearing where you place it sideways. And we'll talk about why here in a minute. And then you choose one of the birds from your tree to add to your photo journal. So you startle a bird, add a bird to your photo journal. The reason you rotate that bird 90 degrees is, remember, you have some more actions to take on your turn. Uh, one of them is you can call birds to your tree, but if it's been startled, you cannot do that. So once you startle a bird on your turn, that bird will not then return to your tree. There is no way to do that. Also note that if you choose to do this activity twice, so I startle another bird into the clearing, I cannot put it on top of another startled bird, so it would have to go someplace else. And then I would add that bird to my photo journal. And remember, if there are any insect tokens, there's not on these two birds, but if there were any insect tokens, uh, then I would add those to my, I would take those from the supply and put them on my player board. Another thing I could do, cost one action, is to perform a bird call. And so I can call uh, one specific species, and I look for all visible birds of that species. So it doesn't count if they're underneath of other birds. They have to be visible. And so I add all visible uh, copies of that bird to my tree. And so it doesn't matter whether they're in the jungle or the clearing, all copies of that species, uh, all birds of that species would be added to your tree. You have to add all the birds you have space for, and like I said before, you have a maximum of six birds that can fit in your tree. If there would have been um, more birds, that was a bad one to pick, there's not many of those. Um, if there had been more, let's just say there had been three of those out, and I already had four birds in my tree, I wouldn't be able to add all three of those. I would only be able to add two, but you do have to add all of the ones that you have space for. And again, like I said, you only add cards that are visible at the start of your turn. So for instance, well, if there had been one of those birds, yeah, here's one. If, if we had this situation here, where we have two that are visible, so I call all these birds and I put them in my tree, and that revealed another one of the same species. It doesn't matter. That bird was not visible at the start of your turn, and so therefore it cannot be at the start of the activity, and so therefore it cannot be added to your tree. Note that if any birds had been startled, you cannot call a startled bird back to your tree. They're startled after all. They don't want to come anywhere near you. Your camera's too noisy. And again, your tree cannot contain more than six birds. At the end of that activity, once you do that, you just call birds, you would then fill the jungle up again if you had taken any from the jungle. So we've talked about taking a photo. We've talked about performing a bird call. Another thing you can do that costs one action is run into the jungle. And when you run into the jungle, all of these birds from the jungle come over to the clearing. Now remember, you have to fill empty spaces first. Um, so I could choose, uh, so here's my three jungle birds. I could choose any one of these three to put in that empty space, but I have to fill that first. I can put a bird on top of a startled bird, and when that happens, that bird is no longer startled. As long as you fill the empty spaces first, uh, it's your choice where to put them. And so once you run into the jungle and uh, those birds fly into the clearing, you would then refill uh, the jungle spots. So sometimes it's a good idea to first run into the jungle and then perform a bird call because perhaps you have um, revealed additional birds of a particular species that you're looking for. Do note that if there are multiple of the imposter nestlings when you do the perform a bird call, you can take the multiples of those. Same thing goes for the black sickle bills. They are, after all, the same species. But if there are any rare hybrids uh, in the clearing or in the jungle, when you do the perform a bird call action, um, these are all different species, so uh, they would only, you would only call one of those. All right, so that is taking a photo, performing a bird call, running into the jungle. Another thing you can do, and this costs two actions, so you really want to think about this, is you can do what's called zoom lens. You can only choose this action if you have at least one bird in your tree. And what you would do is you would take a bird from your opponent's tree 
and place it directly into your photo journal. And then you would take one of your birds and put it into your opponent's tree. So you get to choose which one of your birds go into your opponent's tree. And then they get to draw the top card from the bird deck and put that bird in their tree, as long as they have space for it. If they already have six birds in their tree, and this would cause them to have a seventh bird, then they don't draw that bird from the bird deck. Um, but that person only had three, so they can do that. And finally, the fifth activity that you can do is to publish. And this costs two actions. And you would choose one of the face-up publication cards from the Academy to add to your photo journal. So, for instance, maybe I want this one where it says one citation point for each bird in your tree at the end of the game. So this would give me a point for each bird still in my tree at the end of the game. It does give me three books. And so I would put that in the next space. Remember, we always go from left to right. I would put that in the next space in my photo journal. And then at the end of that activity, you would then refill the Academy. One important thing to remember is that a publication would interrupt any sets that you have going on. So for instance, if you had placed this standard wing bird of paradise into your uh, photo journal, and then you put this publication here, and then you played this other standard wing bird of paradise, you've interrupted that set. So each of those two birds in this case would score you only two points. Right, so those are the five possible activities you can do on your turn. Remember, you get three actions. Three of the possible activities cost one action each, and then zoom lens and publish each cost you two actions. You can always spend two insect tokens to gain an additional action, but you can only do that one time during your turn. All right, so what triggers the end of the game? Uh, there's two things that can trigger the end of the game. First, a player reaches a specific number of pages in their photo journal, and that's going to vary depending on the number of players. Uh, it'll be 12 pages in a four or five player game, 14 pages in a three player game, 16 pages in a two player game, and in a solo game it is 18 pages. Uh, the other way that the end of the game can be triggered is if a card cannot be drawn from the bird deck when it is needed. So not just running out of the bird deck, but you can't draw one from there when it is needed. Once either of those two things happen, play is going to continue until all the players have had the same number of turns, and so that's why it's important to give the first player this first player marker so you can keep track of that. Once everybody has had the same number of turns and the game is over, then we will go through scoring. And so there is a score pad included with the game. You'll first score all of your birds according to uh, points per set, or, or if they have a scoring stamp, points per bird. Then you will score according to the criteria on your publications. Whoever has the most black sickle bills will get seven points, and whoever has second most will get three points. Uh, and those have to be in your photo journal. They can't be just in your tree, but the, the most sickle bills in the photo journal get seven points and second most gets three points. Whoever has the greatest variety of birds will get seven points, uh, and whoever is second place gets third points. Then you'll also score your insect tokens, so these score uh, according to how many unique insect tokens you have. So let me give a hypothetical scenario here. Let's say that we have these insect tokens right here. We have one, two, three, four unique insect tokens. And that would be worth 10 points. Um, notice that these don't score as separate sets. This is not two sets of unique insect tokens. That's not a thing. Uh, these would just be two extra that don't get scored. So you probably should have used those to gain an extra action. Next up, we score for number of books. And these are these symbols down here in the left corner of the publication cards. Uh, so whoever has the most gets five points. Whoever has the fewest gets minus two points. And in fact, having zero books will always get you minus two points. Uh, so if there's multiple people with zero books, they would all get minus two points. And then you total those up and the person with the most citation points is the winner. If there is a tie, the player with the most birds remaining in their tree 
uh, would then win the game, and if there's still a tie, the players would share the victory. Uh, I do want to point out that the rule book, um, so the rule book's actually quite good. Uh, it goes through the different components of the game and then the different uh, actions um, that you can do. And I thought it was really nice that they also have a brief, brief guide to ethical birding and bird photography. So basically, don't go running into the jungle to scare the birds. Don't startle the birds from your clearing into your tree. And don't use noisy cameras. Um, basically, let the birds be. But anyway, they give you some brief guide to ethical birding and bird photography, and then some really fun facts about birds of paradise. I do want to point out that the artist for this game is actually a biologist and a scientific illustrator, and so I don't know if she had any input on the uh, facts about the birds of paradise, but they are all accurate um, and quite interesting. Uh, so that's that. It does also come with uh, solo rules, and for the solo game there are these, you're playing against a solo AI, but it's an extremely easy AI to run. I'm going to do a solo playthrough, so if you want to see how that works, you can take a look at that. Um, but it comes with six different levels of difficulty, all the way from easy to uh, hardest. Uh, so six different levels of difficulty there. And the way that scales is they can start with a particular number of points, a particular number of books, and a number of black sickle bills. And that's how you play Birdwatcher. Uh, if you're interested in seeing a solo playthrough, that is posted on the channel, so you can go take a look at that. Uh, at the end of that video, I'll give you my thoughts on the game, and as well as my thoughts about how well the uh, theme and the mechanisms are integrated with each other and the science behind some of this. Uh, but basically, they did, a, they did a pretty good job. The couple of things that are not consistent with the theme were done in the interest of, of better gameplay. So you can hear my thoughts on that at the end of the solo playthrough. Uh, but that's all I have for you now. So bye. See you in the next video.